Howdy and welcome to the Cape. It's great to have you back. I'm Mark and you're watching Blue Street Customs. Howdy guys. Today I'm starting a new electronics video. Hope you like it. I'm going to be building a Tesla coil. Yes, it's a kit. It comes from China, a place called Banggood. I'll put the link in the description for the website. Be sure to check that out. Now, let's see what I've got here. Let's see what it consists of, and we'll get started on it. Okay, so what do we've got here? <clears throat> we got a Tesla coil. So this did come from China. What we've got in the package is a couple of heat sinks, a primary coil, we've got the um, circuit board, it is double sided, it's all through, through hole design. As you can see everything on it is already marked, it tells you what goes where, And we've got a whole bunch of little things here. Let's see what we've got. We've got, looks like a vacuum uh, light. I don't know if it's incandescent or if they're just using it as a spark gap. We have two resistors here. I'm not quite sure the value yet, but I will let you know. And we got two more. Oof. They are different values. I don't know if you can see that. But they are different values. Oh. Short strand of wire. I'm thinking secondary coil. Looks like we've got yeah, four standoffs. Your brass. Power socket. Now this kit does not come with a um, power adapter so you will have to find a 12 volt I believe it is and once I open up the instructions I will let you know got a couple red LEDs a little uh, dip capacitor looks like a 105 now I don't think you can see that I can't seem to get the focus on it. Can't get it to focus, but it says 105 on it. We got transistors here, TIP41C. Can't seem to get it to focus on this either. Oh, right there, very close. Just gonna have to take my word for it. And this one, we got an IRF530N. If I'm not mistaken, they are both uh, NPN transistors. Now this, I know it's a socket, it's usually used for things like um, headphones and stuff like that. It can be some power jacks, but what it's being used for in here, I'm not sure. And then we've got a small electrolytic capacitor. Let's see if I can read the uh, value of it, wherever they put it, oh, right there. One microfarad, not sure the voltage, 105 Celsius. So that's what we've got. So let's take a look at the instructions <coughs> and see what we've got. And we've got problems. Nicely printed, but unless you're gonna translate it all for me, this is not going to be the funnest projects. So I'm going to figure out if I can get this translated or not somehow. This put a real stump into things. So give me a few minutes and I'll see what I can come up with. So we will just start by at one end and work our way across. I've already got my soldering iron hot. A little bit of flux and my solder. I 
everything's all ready to go. Now I like to use a toothpick <clears throat> just to apply some of the solder so you're not getting it everywhere. But I do have a brush that I can use too if needed, which on something like this I don't think I need. So first things first, I'm going to start in the center just to make it easier. So to start, I'm going to put in a 10K resistor. Pretty hard to see those colors. Huh. Get this all bent into shape. And drop this one in. And on the back side, I just fold things over for now just to hold things in. So I can come back after, turn it upside down, nothing will fall out. You'll also need a pair of really small side cutters which you could trim off a little bit so you don't have wire everywhere. Kind of like so. Then they're not getting in the way when you're trying to put other stuff in. So here, next, one microfarad capacitor, which of course is this. <clears throat> now on most capacitors, they'll have some sort of indication that shows ground. In this case, it's a gray stripe. If not, and they haven't been cut, your ground is the shorter, positive is the longer one. Now on here it is marked, positive, negative. Again here, negative side is shaded white, positive is open color. So we'll put that in. And once again, I'm just going to bend these over and trim them off. And you will hold that in, just like that. Very simple, very easy. So next, you need a 2K resistor. Bend these down tight, like so. Just so you have them, you know, bent up nice and neat. Now there is no direction in a resistor, so it doesn't matter which way you put them in. Another 10K resistor. Okay, next thing we've got to put in is there's a 2K resistor right here. So we're going to fold that up, put that one in. Now I'm going to come back after and trim these back some more yet. Now we got a little capacitor here, this little 205, no, 105, sorry. And with these capacitors, there's no direction. They're bipolar, so you don't have to worry about which way they go in. Okay, we have two LEDs. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can show that somehow. Maybe right there, you kind of see that little flash of light right at the edge here. That's a flat spot. Now the flat spot indicates the negative. Okay. Again, also the negative is short, positive is long. So your anode, your cathode. Now in here, they also have an indication which side this flat spot should go. These two LEDs. Put those in. There you go. Two LEDs in. Now the next thing. I'm going to do before we go any further. So I'm going to take these heat sinks. They're aluminum. They're threaded. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these things in. So you will need a screwdriver for this. Trying to make sure they're straight. Second one. Now, if you have some thermal paste, you put the thermal paste on the back side of these transistors. 
And thermal paste will actually help conduct the heat away from the transistor. I don't have any more, so I still need to get some. But for the amount that this will be on and being used, I shouldn't have a problem with heat. Now, once again, everything is marked here. So the TIP41 will go there, which would be this one. Again, I'm just going to bend these over for now, one in each direction. This one here is the IRF530 on this side. These things are pretty easy, fairly well self explanatory. And there, we have that. Now, we have the power socket. So that's going to go right beside it. And again, I'm just going to, or maybe not. One should hold. Now, when I solder these down, I will be making sure they sit tight and hard, flat so they can get soldered in properly. Now for the headphone jack, again, same thing. Just gonna bend one over on each side here, just to keep it in, just like that. Now I'm gonna get this stuff soldered in first, then I'll deal with the coil. Now we have two coils. We have the secondary, which will go on, and then we'll have the primary, which I'll have to wind around it. So let me get this set up so we can solder. Okay. <clears throat> now I've got soldering flux on there. Just very little of it. What soldering flux does is help clean the pieces and prep the metal to accept the solder. It also helps transfer the heat better, which then you don't have to leave your soldering iron on your uh, electronic parts as long because heat can damage. So I have a soldering iron set just above 400. A little bit of solder. Now. I'm going to start with these transistors first. I'm going to make sure everything's sitting nice and straight. And that's all it takes. It's just one little touch. And the solder should flow very nicely. Now, once you've got it soldered in, I'm going to come back, trim off the excess. Just give that spot just a little wipe, wipe down. Just to help get rid of some of the flux. And that's what you'll be left with. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit more after this. For now, that's what we got. So I'm going to do the rest of these. And I'll come back and show you. Hey, there we have it. All soldered in. So our next step will be the coil. We'll put this one on first, and then we'll put the other one on but from what I can see there's no way to actually hold this down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get uh, my hot glue gun hot so I can glue this down because in the instructions they say nothing about how to mount this now you could probably use some sort of five minute epoxy glue if you want uh, some super glue might hold it PVA won't. To me, the best thing would be hot glue. Quick, easy, and if you look inside other electronics, they use a lot of hot glue to hold down wires to keep them from moving, make sure things stay separated, isolation. So that's what I'm going to do. So give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. Hey, now that we've got it all glued down, as you can see here, 
But anyways, got that glued down. So next, I'm going to hook up this wire here, which is very hard to see because it's so thin. I don't know if you can see that. That has to go down through that hole. But before we do that, <clears throat> what we're going to have to do is take some sandpaper or a knife or something. Because this is coated speaker wire or enamel coated wire, however you want to say it, you got to take that coating off of it. Make sure you got it cleaned off really good. Probably should have did this before. Or I glued it down, but I wasn't thinking. No, now I just got to do it the hard way. Now you can tell when it's all off because the lacquer coating is red. Okay, so I got that cleaned off. Then we're going to carefully put it down through that hole. And I'm going to leave a little bit sticking up just for expansion or movement. Kind of like so. I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see it looped up. Bit. I left some room. So now underneath, I'm just going to put a little bit of solder here, or uh, flux, I should say. And then once again, turn this off. Now, the next wire for the, uh, for this, yeah, this one's the primary. Okay, now for the primary wire, trim off the ends, strip the ends of them, I guess. Like that, strip them off, put a little bit of flux on them, on one of them, for now. Now, <clears throat> on here, the windings of this, of the secondary, are going this direction. Okay, they're going this direction. It'd be counterclockwise from looking at the top, the counterclockwise. So, your secondary or your primary has to go in the same direction. So we're going to start by putting wire in this one right here. I'll solder that one in just so I don't have to fight with it. Kind of got it sticking through. A little touch of solder. And so I'm going to stab myself. Now, remember, we have to go counterclockwise. This one here, this end. We'll go down in this hole here. So I'm going to trim it up. A little bit of soldering tape or soldering flux. Back down in there, like so. So it's sticking out. And there we have it. Trim that one off a little bit. So, clean it off rid of the uh, flux residue. And there we have it. Make sure that it's nice and neat down at the bottom. You can probably put some hot glue on it if you want. I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Now they give me screws and some standoffs here in case you want to mount it on something. So the screws just go in the four corners like so. One in each corner. And these just get threaded on. I'm just going to put them on hand tight for now. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to get a power pack for this. This here will run anywhere from 9 volt to 30 volt. Obviously the more voltage you put in, the more you're going to get out. So, let me get that set up and I'll show you how it works. Hey, okay, here we go. I got 12 volts in there with only 500 milliamps. Now, of course, if you had more power, it would work a lot better. But it does, do, does work. So I'm going to turn the light off here just to show you here. So we got a little halogen here. As you can see, which might be hard for you to see. does light up. See how it does light up? So it's producing a magnetic field and that magnetic field 
is outwards, projecting outwards, and exciting the molecules inside. So here's a fluorescent bulb. And as you can see, it is lighting it up. No power, no nothing. I'm going to cover this LED here. Now, if you had more power, it'd be brighter. So there you have it. Nice little mini Tesla coil kit from Banggood. So <clears throat> I'll leave a link in the description and you guys can pick it up if you want. Try it out, build it yourself. Have a good time. Nice little thing. And it's safe. I'm touching all the wires. No problem. These do get a little warm. But not too bad. That's why the heat sinks are there. The chips themselves. A little warm. But nothing major. Everything is good to go. If you like these types of videos. You want to see me do more. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more of these videos. Very soon, my wooden model ship will be coming up for another video, as well as my sawmill diorama. If you want to check those out, I'll leave links in the descriptions. So until then, have fun, be safe, later.